This is the first part of our mini-series Advanced Structure, and in this video we will be talking about motor transformation, or more specifically, gears. Gears transfer motion by meshing together and spinning. Shown here are most of the gears you'll be using. These are the basic types of gears meshed together and placed on a beam. This is the smallest gear, which is 8 teeth. This is the medium gear, which is 24 teeth. And this is the largest gear, which has 40 teeth. These gears mesh together perfectly when they're in a straight line, and also in any combination of the three, they still work, including two of the same kind. These are angle meshing pieces, which are characterized by looking fatter because they have these rounded teeth. The small one is 12 teeth, the medium one is 20 teeth, and the large one has 36 teeth. As shown in these three examples, these angle meshing pieces, as the name suggests, mesh with the normal pieces on these angle pieces. Sometimes you want to transfer motion not only along a line, but in different directions. And that's where we have these direction changing gears. Just like direction changing pieces, direction changing gears transfer motion in two different directions. The most common one are these black gears with four rounded teeth, and they're only compatible with itself. They can be used to transfer motion along a line, but more commonly, they're used to transfer uh, motion in, dire in different directions, shown here. Next, we have these manila color flat gears, and these gears can only transfer motion in different directions. There's a smaller version of them and there's a larger version and you can use them interchangeably with itself or with each other. There's another really cool piece that I like to use, but it's not a gear. It does transfer motion though. As you can see, when you spin one end, the other end spins as well. But what's cool about it is it can spin in more than 90 degrees. In all these directions, it can spin and transfer motion. So you can use this whenever you have odd angles you want to transfer motion through. In Lego, there are these cool gearboxes. These gearboxes are Lego, so you can use them in the competition. By putting in these half manila colored gears, you can transfer motion in cool ways. For example, this gearbox will transfer motion in the opposite direction. By spinning, forward here, it spins backward, and by spinning backward, this axle spins forward here. This gearbox does the same purpose by, trans by, uh, by reversing the direction spinning, but it also has another axle here, so it transfers motions in three ways. One last cool piece are these Lego racks. As you can see, these are Lego pieces with teeth on them and can connect to regular Lego studs, like so. By making a simple rack and pinion system, we can transfer a motion along a line from side to side. You could speed things up or down by using gears. For example, we have the smallest gear here meshing with the largest gear here. And the smallest gear has eight teeth, while the largest gear has 40 teeth. If you notice, if you, you have to spin the small gear many, many times for the big gear to spin once. And similarly, you have to just spin the big gear a little bit for the small gear to spin a lot. This means that when, you, when your power source is at the smaller gear, the power source that comes out of this gear will slow down a lot. Whereas if you connect the power source to this gear, the power source from here will be a lot faster. And you can actually calculate how much you're speeding up or how much you're slowing down. So this gear has eight teeth. Whereas this gear has 40 teeth. This means that if you spin this big gear once, you can assume that for the length of 40 teeth have been um, passed. 
So that means it will take five rotations of the smaller gear to travel the length of 40 teeth. Because 40 divided by 8 is equal to 5 rotations. This means if your power source is starting from the smaller gear, then it will speed up, I mean, it will slow down by 5 times once the power source comes out of here. Whereas if the power source is from here, it will speed up by 5 times when the power source comes from here. So you can find the ratio of the speed by calculating the ratio of the number of teeth. And whenever you're in doubt of whether it's speeding up or as we call gearing up or slowing down or as we call gearing down, you could try it out and see and um, remember that the smaller gear will spin much more times for one rotation of the bigger gear. This is an attachment we used in FLL in the world class season, which uses a lot of gears, so we're showing it as an example. Over here is a rack and pinion system, so when it spins, it pulls this switch. And over here, we have a long line of gears, because we need it to connect this arm to this, to the motor, which goes over here. This arm over here needed to be very strong, so we geared it down, so it, over here, so it's five times as slow, but also five times as strong. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching.